New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning. No Laura Stow. She's in Thailand, Cam. So okay, she's not a dance. Want to send us a, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's out here balling. Mm-hmm. Rosenberg, give it up. Killer Cam. Killer Cam. Thank you, guys, man. That's Yo, big. Purple Haze 2 on the way. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Purple Haze 1, we're going to run through some joints off that. Okay. Do we have music today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. 100%. We got the album. So we we, we can play some we things. We can play a bunch of things. Oh, Whatever you want to play. Ooh, Absolutely. Hang on, hang on, things. hang on, hang yeah. on. So what what um what made you go Purple Haze too? Like, cause you you recently put out an album where it was a year ago you dropped the album. Two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. which was a phenomenal body of work that Thank caught you. people by surprise. Thank you, I appreciate it. It was celebrated. Hip hop loved it. Thank you. What why Purple Haze too? Um, you know, I was working with Universal, um, few people over there, not directly Universal, but some people that work over there. And I wasn't realizing that this is the 15 year anniversary of Purple Haze mm-hmm. One. Yeah. So I was Gonna do some cross promotion with Purple Haze One and Purple Haze Two, but we couldn't get it together as far as marketing and promotion together. But I still decided to put the album out at the same time. Purple Haze One came out December seventh, fifteen years ago. So I did part two this year. Um, and for the fans, free concert in Brooklyn. Yes, this Friday coming up. Um, uh, it's a Vice event. I don't know exactly where it's at. Um, <laughs> Wait, hold on. No, no I, yeah, villain. It's called Villain. Uh, villain. Oh, it's a Villain. Um, Williamsburg. It, yeah, it's a thousand. It's a thousand seat venue. They RSVP seven thousand people. So get there early. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's get there early if you want to get in. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, well, yeah, get there pretty early. Yo, man. we don't have so many classic. Cam, Jim Jones, Dipset shows in the city. Right. Remember we used to do them joints over there? The, uh, was it like a Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. Listen, um... And what was that place called? Hammerstein, Hammerstein Ballroom. Ballroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Still there. Y'all, y'all did the first reunion. When, yeah. we, when we wasn't speaking, everybody was like on doing whatever you're doing, but... Hot 97 did the first reunion ever. It's has, been like 800 reunions since Yeah, then, I was about to say. But y'all did the original has reunion. It been, has it been pleasant for your general life being on good terms with everybody? Has it just made life easier? I don't want to be on bad terms with nobody. That makes life easier no matter who it is, family or right. not family. I mean, I don't want to be on bad terms with anybody. It's an annoying thing to have hanging over your head and be asked about. It's just so much nah, easier. because everything, you got to realize, what, you know, one day me and Jim was talking, and we was like, yo, you know that, um, because a lot of artists out and... They may be a little older than us, but their music is newer than ours. Cause they be like, oh, you know, Dipset O2, whatever they want to say. But the point is, we got my first record deal, and I was 19 or 20 years old. So we've been doing this a long time. So a lot of things are gonna be public, whether we fight, whether we're friends. Y'all grew up in front of everybody. In front of everybody. Right. Our whole adult life has been a record deal as far as the public's concerned, or movies, or clothing, or entertainment, or anything else. So Personal shit is going to leak into publicity sometime. Can you give me a little bit of the story of what the structure was? Because, like, as far as Lance, mm-hmm. you, uh, Lance, Un Rivera, and how was every- that Undias? Yeah, uh, um, Entertainment. Entertainment. How everything how came unfolded? together? Well, um, from beginning to right now, uh, you know, me and Mace grew up together. Mace introduced me to Biggie when he got signed to Bad Boy. Um, this is 96-ish. Maybe. I don't want to say the years because I, I can't even remember off the time I had big... I don't want to say the wrong year okay. when people died and everything and then niggas get mad at me for okay. not knowing the <laughs> exact right, right. date and shit. So Mace, Mace, Mace signs with Bad Boy yeah. or with, and it was going to sign with, and with Biggie and then introduces you. Mace signed with Bad Boy. He introduced me to Biggie when he got on Bad Boy. Um, big wanted to sign me. Big passed away. When they shot the video in Harlem, I ran down on Un, like, yo, I'm the dude that was at Big House that so he wanted to sign. Un got the deal at Epic Records, Epic Sony. When he got his deal at Epic Records, he signed me and Charlie Baltimore. I ended up doing my first album, Confessions of Fire, mm-hmm. Entertainment. Um, he lost his deal, but Sony had the rights to any artist that he had, so I ended up doing one album with Epic Records. SDE. SDE, yep, exactly. After I did SDE, I realized I started learning the business. I had somebody on the inside telling me what Epic wasn't doing and should have been doing. Um, me and Dame Dash also grew up together, and Rockefeller was popping at that time, and me and Dame did a lot of things outside of music together that I called him for a favor. And I said, look, I really need your help. I need to get out this deal, da 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 We worked it out. I ended up going to Rockefeller. I signed with Rockefeller. When I got to Rockefeller, 
Kevin Lyles wanted to sign diplomat and Ju- diplomats and jewels. Dame Dash didn't allow that. He flipped on Kevin Lyles, and they got into <laughs> it. So we ended up signing the Rockefeller, Def Jam, Jewels, and Diplomats. Jim didn't want to wait. Jim went to Koch. At the same time, we was doing the Rockefeller thing. I talked to Alan Grumblack, told him Jim is super nice. He's he's a workaholic. He's going to do his thing. So Jim got his deal at Koch. Um, then I put out Come Home With Me, the album. Mm-hmm. Jewels put out two albums. Played the Diplomat album. Jim put out his few albums. Uh, uh, L.A. Reid came to Def Jam with Kevin Lyles, Julie, and Leo was leaving Def Jam. You know, Rockefeller started to split up with Jay and Dame. Ellie Reed was a super cool dude because I still believe I owed them four albums at Def Jam. He let me out my deal. I went to Warner Brothers, which was a silent with Tom Moskowitz and right. Joey I.E. Okay. Um, I did a label deal over there where um, we did a couple diplomat projects. I put out two albums through them. I did Killer Season, the movie, Killer Season, the soundtrack. And throughout all these things that I'm telling you about, I'm still doing business with Koch for um, side artists and so on and so forth. Um, I got out that deal, and then I just do things independent from here on out. Now, looking back, you know, um, what are what are your favorite business moves, mm-hmm. and what are some business moves that, if a young person is looking back at your Everything your blueprint, what are some things you should have zigged um, instead of zagged? Right. Um, my, let's go with my favorite business move. Well, I'm not going to say it's my favorite, but the best business move I would say is really thanking L.A. Reid for letting me out the deal. I know he was just getting the Dev Jam, and um, he wanted me to stay because he was trying to get things together, but I was more comfortable in the system that I was working with, with um, Julie, Kevin, and Leo. Even you knew though, them? Yeah, I knew them, and even though I was working with Todd and Joey and the new experience, they was overseeing it. But... He let me out that deal, owing him four albums, and I had, and they had a lot of M's for me over at Atlantic. Love M's. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I never I, had one myself. But it sounds <laughs> tremendous. Sounds amazing. They, they, no, they 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 had a lot of money, but he didn't have to let me out that right. deal. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was really dope of him to let me out the deal. And if you would have stayed. You might have got ended up stuck there. He's right. not there yeah, no more. Yeah, he's not there Hove no more. Left, left, like right, the, you exactly. Know. Yeah. So that was really a dope move. But for me, always, my thing is this. It's always been for everybody to make money so you don't have to ask me for money. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about the people I fuck with. Like, if you look in the beginning, I, I made sure Jim Name was on videos directed. I wanted Jewels to, to have his own shit. Mm-hmm. Duke the God, my cousin, like... You do all the mixtapes. You the A and R of the company. You you manage the artists and everything. My thing is just to f- find a way to make sure the people around me made money. Because if you don't, then it's gonna be like let me hold something. Which I don't mind that, but I'd rather you make your own than let me hold something. And to this day, everybody's be able, everybody's just able to survive on their own. You know, people be like Cam, you raised pit bulls, but I'm under Dame Dash, you know, so I grew up under Dame Dash, so he raised pit bulls because right. it's a lot of artists, and I don't want to say names, but they came up under people, and you don't see them, they disappear. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you gonna see Jim on TV. I know Juels is going through something like that right now. Shout out to Juels, but everybody that I fuck with still making a living for themselves, whether it's music or not, and that was key to me. Let's go back a little further. Um, children. Hold on real quick. Sorry. The bad thing that I would have done, because he asked me a two-part question, okay. pardon me, is just handling situations better with internally with my people. Some mm-hmm. things may have got leaked. Even, like, a lot of things that y'all see publicly, I don't really beef with my family publicly, but it's ways we could have communicated better. Right. Like, for instance, I'll just give an example. Let's say, and I don't know this, I'm just giving an example. Let's say it's Migos, right? They're not always going to get along. But it ain't for y'all to know right. all the time that they not getting along. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure that motherfucking these, not just me, any crew, they're not going to get crew. along. Everybody. Everybody. But once it start getting public, especially in this era, you can start speculating this, speculating that. I turn on the blog, and, he, you know, and the things we talked about is pre-internet era, you know, leading in the internet era. But you turn on, you click it, you see it, you believe it. No homework behind it, no due mm-hmm. diligence. People don't even read the article. They, they don't just read, read the headline. Yeah. headline. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I would have handled our problems internally more and not let them get out. But that's the only thing that I would say for young groups and young movements coming forward. If y'all got problems, meet up with each other 
and figure it out before you go public with it. Because once it gets out, it's out. And now, now it's going to come back. Lack it's going to affect everything. Communication destroys the nation, man. Y'all got to talk to each other. So that's the advice I would give the up and coming crews: keep your problems internal. Because once it's out, it's out. Like people are, um, people are saying that yo, me and Jim is not speaking, and I, I just got off the phone with Jim. You know what I'm saying? It's just you see, because they is. You can assume, right? You know what I'm saying. I, I did a song, Max B. Cam. Jim is mad at, at Cam. I just got off the phone with Jim. Oh, Jim did a song with Vado. Cam's mad. At, niggas just make up anything. So, just internally, if everybody, if y'all have a movement or crew, if y'all communicate, everything else should be cool. Sorry about that. No, 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 no worries. All right. So going back, can you take us through the what your early, um, how the Mace Big L. Children of the Corn relationship began for you at the very yeah, beginning? Absolutely. Well, I, me and Big L from the same block. Like, Mace is from, I got cool with Mace in high school. You're from 139th and? I'm from 140th and Lennox. 140th and Lennox, so a block, Big, yeah, right Big there. L is from 139th and Lennox, but it's a park in between. Right. So everybody from. What kind of rapping y'all was doing at yeah. that park? So yeah, Let's crazy. talk about the lyrics y'all yeah, was, yeah. was going on. Rappity yeah. rap part. It was crazy. I mean, McGruff was really big and. It was like, to be honest, it was like, on my block, it was like Gruff and Big L, the main rappers. I used to play basketball. Rap was like... And they were I, a few years older than you? Yeah. Okay. They, Big L is like four years, three years older than me, four years older than me. Both him and Gruff, the same age. Okay. But they was the rappers. I was just a basketball player rapping for a hobby. You know what I'm saying? So Big L was like the main rapper. Then he got a deal, and it was like, oh, shit, he got a fucking deal. You know what I'm saying? Because a deal was like... A uh, fucking amazing to get it that time. And we all felt that Harlem had the jinx. Like, nobody, everybody from Queens is on. Everybody from the Bronx is on. Everybody from Brooklyn is on. Everybody from Long Island is on. It was nobody really on from Harlem since, like, Dougie Fresh or Kumo D or mm. fucking Rob Bass or something like that. So we felt it was a jinx on Harlem. And then um, Big L got a deal, and then it, it was, like, one of them deals where... You had to do what the label told you. you know His Columbia saying? deal. Yeah, 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 exactly. You had to do what the label told you. So it really wasn't like he could do what he wanted to do. And then, um, like I said, I, me and Mace um, went to high school together. So Mace started coming to my block. Because my block is like a magnet. Everybody just comes over there. It don't matter what part of Harlem you from. It's a magnet in that park. People come over there. So Mace started hanging out on my block. And um, everybody was just cool. But... Um, so Big Al got the deal. It was all right. You know, we did a, a couple songs on his album. Mace ended up meeting this. Mace went away to college. He ended up coming back home. He met this dude named Kuda Love. Kuda Love, um, some type of way, I don't know the dynamics of it, but he managed or road managed Biggie Smalls. Um, Mace was living with him, and Kuda was kind of, you know, we didn't, and I was staying over there, not living, but I was going over there every day with them. And Kuda, some type of way, moved to Harlem. But we didn't really understand how to make a song. Kuda knew how to make songs mm. and knew how to vibe and tell niggas, yo, y'all got to fuck with the bitches. Because Mace was murder, you know what I'm saying? Everything was tough. Everything was hardcore. Everything was was street shit. And Kuda's the one who kind of navigated, nah, y'all got to vibe. And then and I didn't want to hear it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mace Murder fought. Mace, Killer yeah, Cam, yeah, everything really is wanna, street yeah, shit. I didn't really want to hear that shit because I used to listen to R&B shit. My God bless the dead. My cousin used to call me Candy Cam. Like, yo, what the fuck you listening to that uh, guy or whoever, Gerald Laverta, whoever the fuck I would listen to. I used to get slack for even listening to R&B music on my own time. <laughs> right, right. So um, basically, Kuda kind of, kind of taught Mace how to do that. If he, Mace said in one of the drama, he like, Kuda school me to the game. Um, now I know my duty. But Kuda put him on. But Kuda really wasn't getting money either. So they spent all their bread, their, their last bread to go to Jermaine Dupree's birthday party one year. And they was like, we, they, they been practicing for a year, had they shit together. They was just going to go to this birthday party. Here? The party was here? It was in Atlanta. In Atlanta, okay. Yeah, so they all, they went down there. They went down there, and um, Jermaine didn't really want to fuck with it from what I heard when they came back, but Puff wanted it, and Heavy D, God bless the dead, wanted Mace. Mm. And, um, yeah, and Mace was, like, popping after that party, so Puff wanted to sign Mace, but he told Mace, if you fucking with Kuda, I can't fuck with you. I don't know what kind of beef Kuda and Puff had going on pre previous to when me, us meeting Kuda, 
But he told Mace, if you fuck with Kud, I can't fuck with you. And Mace was loyal to Kud. He's like, I'm not going to do that. So they ended up working it out. Mm. And that's how Mace ended up getting On his deal. Yeah, ended up getting his deal. Now, Man. so there was always the rumors later, um, towards the end, that Big L was going to sign with Rockefeller. Uh -huh. Did you pe play any part in that? Slash, do you remember that being a thing? Yeah, well, like I said, the thing about it is, all right, so Harlem is real, like, and and my niggas fuck with me on the east side of Harlem about that. Harlem on the west side is real, like, if you live on 144th, you don't necessarily fuck with niggas on 141st. Like, if you go two stoops up, that's some other niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> okay. I, I'm right here. That nigga over there right there, I don't fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, he's, he's in another neighborhood almost, right? I'm talking about right, right there. there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I, start, I was doing shit with Dame, and Big L was kind of getting out his deal, and I'm like, yo, we kind of moving. Now we kind of moving past L, because he's stuck in the deal. Mason got the deal, shit getting a little. So I'm telling um. Made, I'm telling Al, I'm like, they want to fuck with you, you know, on the sign. He want to, um, not necessarily sign him, he want to manage him. And he's like, yo, we could talk, we could talk, you know what I'm saying? But the the, the OGs on my block never really liked Dame. Big L's brother, God bless the dead, and all them niggas, because Dame was flashy, and them niggas was grimy. Mm. And Dame would pull up with Lexuses and cars and give me cars to drive, and I'm fucking 16, 17, 18 years old. So them niggas never really liked them. But Big L really wasn't on that type of time. Big L um, was willing to meet with Dame and so on and so forth. But then me and Dame had some problems, so me and Dame didn't speak for a while. So I don't really know the if Big whatever L was, if any steps were ever yeah, taken. But I definitely know I put, there was a convo. Yeah, I put them together so uh, Dame could talk to him. But Dame wasn't really in a label label position at that time. They was trying to figure it out, but Dame was still busting moves like. Dame have videos and shit on Video Music Box, and that was like a big fucking deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I can't original flavor. I yeah, think he was fucking with he was fucking with Ski and Original yeah, Flavor. Ski and Tone and Original Flavor. Even Jay Z's on they shit rapping when he used to rap fast. Like, mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. So, <laughs> yeah. um, that shit was amazing to us. You know what I'm saying? And he was getting money too. So Dame had like a jump on the hood because he was able to fund his own shit, you know what I'm saying? Instead of waiting on somebody to give you a deal or do this or do that, he was getting bread, funneling into stuff that they wanted to do. Mm. Um, with um, with y'all, you had to navigate, you know, the music side, which you was doing from young. Right. Then you also had to navigate the street side at the same time. Right. Right? And sometimes they intermixed, right, where you had to deal with certain things. Right. Now you're on the other side, but we're seeing a lot of young artists in New York, because you know how New York City is. Right. You got the hip-hop police on everybody's head. Right. You got this whole uh, snitching thing taking place with the kid, uh, Takashi, who's about to get out of jail. Right. Um, what's different now that you see when you look at what the young people is doing? What's, 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 it feels like the code is different in some for some, but not all. Well... Um, you know what I realized with the internet? Not just the internet. You could be who you want to be. It's no background check. Like, I was mm. saying, like, it's certain artists who's, quote, unquote, I don't want to say whatever, but the point being is, they're this person, that person, to where you couldn't lie before. You had to do a background check or you couldn't be... When people had to see you. Yeah. If they, you wasn't they, seen around... That's a fact. They yeah. had to see you or not even that. If you was like a janitor and then you'd be like, yo, I'm a hustler or whatever, they'd be like, nah, we ain't going for it. <laughs> but you could do that now. You get what I'm saying? You could be in whatever you want to be who you want to be. And I'm not knocking that. I think that's dope that people could come... Like, yo... It's so dope to, that how social media makes stars and you don't have to depend on people to co-sign you or mm -hmm. build an artist from the ground up. You get what I'm saying? So um, it's way different. It's no consequences. Same thing we was talking about where you could say slick shit on the internet. Like, I tell niggas, the, the, the internet's the only place where you could criticize a nigga for being broke, log off, and eat a sugar sandwich. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you could do whatever the fuck you want on there. So it's really no consequences with certain shit. And I can't really say... I, to answer your question, I can't really say um, how to how to fix it. I'm not saying fix it, but it is what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? This nigga's walking. This kid coming home, like you said, Takashi, right? Yeah. This shit was like 15, 16 years ago. It would have been all hell broke loose, but 
What you gonna do? Like, what you really, what you, what you gonna beat Well, it's up? almost like there's two sides to the game, right? Mm-hmm. Like, next year, um, I think Schmurter comes home. Right. right? Schmurter took extra time so, so his boy, boy could get, get less. Right. So you're gonna have that version. Mm-hmm. But then you also is gonna have this Takashi thing. These are two different things, hand, street shit handled differently. Right. Right? Absolutely. By two different individuals that are going to put out music. But right. it, but it's very obvious when you look at it what happened. One was the illusion of the internet. I can pretend, and it looks real. The Schmurda shit, those were real dudes on th- that you happened to capture. Right. So it's just two completely well, different people. I, I agree with that, but it's just like, it's it's kind of the artist, the artist was pretending. The right. niggas yeah, around, around him wasn't. They was, no, no, they were. They were eating. There was things happening. Yeah, you know, I got friends in that situation. You know what I'm saying? So, but when you um, when you um, find a wave, and these these are people that made a lot of money with him. You know what I'm saying? Six nine. I'm talking about. Um, Moral of the story, though, is um, you should probably keep the streets away from your other business. Absolutely, I'm hundred percent, hundred percent. Moral if, of the story. And is. if listen, my my man Bang told me this shit a long time ago. Um, you should, you, of course, now you can learn from people's mistakes, but coming into this shit, it ain't no instructions, bro. You don't get a guide and say this is the way it goes and this is the way you do it. Everybody got a different path, a t- different path. To, it's no instructions to this shit, man. Now. There were people, you know, along your path yeah. who said, my man, do this, don't do that. And right. you listened. Right, absolutely. Because, but let me tell you, that's another thing. You know, um, <laughs> Dame always say this about young niggas. Some niggas got the Gary Coleman syndrome because if you the youngest nigga making money in your circle and niggas older than you, even though they've got the best advice telling you what to do, why you listen, why you ain't do that? Why, why you telling me what to do? You should have did this. So if you're the youngest nigga in your crew, sometimes it's hard to take advice from niggas who ain't getting money That's because right. they didn't do shit to secure their future financially. So how am I listening to you? Yeah, but exactly. But then the funny part is, but some of those people actually do have good advice. They just weren't they, able to apply it to 100%, themselves. 100%. I would say 95% of the time, dumb people have great advice. But when you 20, 21 years old, 22, 23, 24, you don't really be wanting to hear it. It's like a few people now... Niggas be wanting me to talk to niggas, and I'll be like, look, I know where I was there. I understand where they at. I'll go talk to them, but I understand where their mentality is at. You know what I'm saying? Because especially my situation, right? I came out of a fucked up situation in Epic. So when I got to Rockefeller, I bombarded that shit. If I had to fight, if I had to argue, if I had to beef, if I had to go yell at people to do whatever, I'm not, I'm not going back to that shit that just happened mm. to me. You know what I'm saying? Like... People come to me and be like, Cam, yo, remember you did this, did that? I'm like, nah, I really don't, because I'm in a whole different mindset. Every time I see Kenny Burns, he's, yo, every time, I don't know if we going to have a fight or not. This nigga like, yo, Cam, remember you cursed me out, rock the fell off? And I'm like, nah, I don't, bro, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it was bad. And I'm like, is he trying to try to steal on me right now? You know what I'm saying? But every time I see him, he brings this because, shit up. But just because you don't even remember in the, from really, the state you were in at exa- that point. I really don't remember what Kenny Burns is talking about. And that's my man. You know, I'm just saying he brings it up. I ain't got no problem with him. But I was in a mind state to where I'm not going back to where the fuck I just came from. And whatever, by all means necessary, I'm going to get to where I had to go. Especially after learning how niggas was jerking me around the Epic. I'm like, when we got the Rockefeller beat... We lived in that shit. We moved in Def Jam. Mm-hmm. We it was two big offices, two big um, walk-in closets with cubicles in front of them. I made niggas clear them shits out. I found the niggas who do electricity in building, put a phone line in there, and put desk in there, and took the because nobody was sitting there. It was two big walk-in closets. We turned them shits into offices, cubicles, and I got interns to work for Just us. Just for you guys. Film was a closet. I'm telling you, nobody was in there. I turned it into offices, and nigga Dame is like, yo, who? I know Kevin ain't giving you no office. I said, this just was closets. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, <laughs> we in here, B. You know what I'm saying? Now, Even- was that was that energy what the the situation? Because I never quite understood why you and Jay just seemed to be competition to me. Right. Where the two MCs with egos couldn't coexist in the same space. You was right. fighting, gunning right. for your for your thing, and you had Hove trying to hold his position and right. being a boss over there. Right. Is that what it was? It was Cam coming in, basically like, yo, I'm taking over? I don't know. You got to really ask Jay that. I never, like, the thing is, I know Jay before he had a record deal. You know what I'm saying? I was outside 
I used to go to Jay Z house and all this stuff. Whatever him and Dame was doing, whatever. I, I've known Jay Z for years before he had a record deal. Jay Z came to my block and battled Big L right. on my block. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't. You're right. I don't really know where the tension stemmed from because we was, we was cool, but it was tension, and I don't really know. And maybe that was because Dame, or it didn't have nothing to do with you. It may I have think, had something to do with What I think Dame. is we came in there moving too fast without talking to him about shit, which right. we probably should have because it's his label as well. But like I told you, we came in there and had offices to where, and no disrespect to nobody else, but the other artist who was there was like, how the fuck they get an office? Gee, we, yo, we been here six, yo, what the fuck going on? They got offices not knowing that we bullied the offices. Right, you just debunked the whole situation. Nobody gave us these offices. We just, we, yo, these, we made these offices. Yeah. So other artists might have been like, fuck is, fuck is niggas, fuck they got an office. Now, mind you, Rockefeller was cool, but yo, all right, cool, where Kaiser at office at? He over this shit. Let's go to Kaiser office. Yo, Zeke, sit in front of Kaiser office until further notice. You know what I'm saying? Serious. Kaiser tell you, yo, we're Kevin Lyle. Yo, Kev, what's up? Da, 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 da. Yo, we're going to get familiar with the niggas they doing business with. You understand? That's like, and I'm not saying it was no cheating, no, no shit like that, but we knew we had good music. So, yo, Kaiser, what's up? Push the button on this old boy shit. You see, I got a rock in mm. there. Fucking Urban, you see niggas flex playing this shit every night. Yo, push the fucking button. All right, Cam, let me see what we can do. All right, cool. He going to be here. He going to follow you around till you figure it out. Motherfucking old boy, oh. old boy come out. I mean, hey, Mark, come out. Yo, this shit is a line. Richie Sample. I, right, we good with Kaiser. Ken Lane, you do Z100 and all that shit, right? Yo, Zeke, stay with that nigga. I mean, this shit need to cross over to Z100 and all the pop stations. Follow him around till we figure out the pop say shit. And old boy became the biggest record in Def Jam history. Then hey, Mark, at the time, became the biggest record in, as far as radio in Def Jam history, but you gotta learn who you doing business with. Niggas be signing labels, that was like my problem, and they could just put happen automatically. It be work that goes behind that shit, you know what I'm saying? So when I got to Rockefeller, I was doing all type of other shit that niggas might have been like, yo, this nigga's speeding. Right. But I came from a fucked up situation. It wasn't like I was a new artist there. So I think really when Dame offered me the job as president, at Rockefeller without authorization from Jay is when all that shit was like, yo, these Harlem niggas is bugging. You know right. what I'm saying? And that, did you and Jay ever connect after that? Or like, you kind of lived in separate lives? Well, you know, it was a situation where, okay, I um, I came, I, it was kind of tension in the, in the, just off the back. I come there, you know, I'm, I'm coming there no homo, no homo, kissing ass, because I, I want to... You want the relationships. Yeah, with everybody, 100%. So I'm like, extra nice to niggas. Ah, oh, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Yo, let's do a song, Freeway, and nah, Bleak, let's do whatever. Let's do Just Blade, let's do songs, whatever. And um, we was workaholics. We didn't leave the studio, you know what I'm saying? So it was a time, like I said, I, 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 I used to talk to Jay, be like, yo, let's do a song together. He'd be like, all right, we'll get to it, whatever, whatever. And we never did nothing, but you could feel tension. So one day, um, I walked in the studio, and he was like, let me talk to you, da, 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 da. And we just talked, and it was cool. And then we ended up doing a New York City song, cool. That's, okay. And I was like, yo, that shit heating up. Let's do a video. He like, yeah, we'll see. And I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? So it just went kind of so back he was to trying. To, he was trying to sun you, basically. I'm not gonna say that, but I think I don't think it's just me. If you look at Jay, he's just a competitor. It yeah, that's matter. what I meant. I mean yeah. on the MC thing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Well, he's yeah. gonna give you the feature and that's a look. Yeah. Chill. I don't know if I'm gonna do the video. Well, by the yeah, way, exactly. Right. We'll see. But, but on not, a competitive, but, it's not even personal. It's yeah, just it's like it's not personal. Like, yeah. like that nigga is that nigga's, yo, that nigga's just a competitor when it comes to this shit. And he don't think he don't want nobody. Fucking with this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me tell you something. When I when I did my first deal at uh, Entertainment, I was recording. You know, I had like a, a few songs on the radio, or whatever. He came to see Un or whatever one time, and I and I was like, uh, "All right, cool. We spoke or whatever." So we in the studio. He's like, "Yo, let me talk to you for a minute." I'm like, "What's up, bro? What's happening? We gotta talk." He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I didn't know you was that nice growing up, you know, because we've been around each other." He's like, "Yo." You, you nice, my nigga. I didn't know, my nigga. I said, yeah, yo, 
we could do some shit on my album. This is my first album record. I said, yo, we could do some shit on my album put together. He's like, yo, I'm not here to lobby for a spot on your album, man. <laughs> 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 that is I'm the like, most whole <laughs> shit. And I'm like, okay, all right, bro. It's all <laughs> good, my nigga. Like, I was, I was just... And by I the way, that's how Brooklyn Harlem <laughs> always do have a And I was also going to point this out. That's a generational thing, too, right? Like, right. Right. there is a... Um, <laughs> Like right now, everybody worked together. Right, absolutely. Right in the in the early nineties, midnight, you owned your zone. Not just midnight, early two thousand two. Early two thousand yeah. I see um two chains talk about that on one of these shows, and he he made a great point. And you know what, Flex was underneath in the comments talking about it that, you know, he was saying you know why Atlanta, I can't say verbatim what they was talking about, but they was like, you know, Atlanta artists. If we gonna do a song together, we gonna do it. Not tomorrow, not next week. You here in the studio now, you in that studio here, we gonna do it. New York, and this is what 2 Chainz saying, he was like, New York, when Dipset run it, Dipset run it. Then it's G-Unit run it, G-Unit run it. If this person run it, that person point. run it. Y'all don't ever let people vibe together. And Flex, Flex was in the comments, he's like, you know what, We that's right, but we gonna change that shit. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So to your point, you're 100% right with that. Um, what was it uh, Jay called you and had you come out? Uh, you guys did a show, uh, an appearance with him recently. What was that like? It was dope. I mean, it wasn't even really no big conversation. Big, um, big. Jim called me, and um, he's like, Jay, won't you come to the concert? I said, I right, bet. Um, Juan called me. Juan's my man, too, for mad years before... All music type shit. He's used, you know, he had a lot of basketball teams in Harlem and shit. So I knew Juan probably since I was 14 years old. I used to bust his ass in all type of rec <laughs> basketball <laughs> tournaments and kill his Juan, team. Juan, what up? Yeah, he not, actually, he'll tell you, I used to kill Juan in the back because he used to play too. Juan used to try and coach and play and all that. And I didn't, I didn't really know what kind of nigga he was. And I used to disrespect him on the court. And after the game, he'd be like, yo, Cam, you was wild. And I'm like, well, I'm a nigga basketball player, you know what I'm saying? But I used to destroy his teams, but um, that's my man. But So anyway, long story short, Juan called me, and he's like, Killer, what's up? And I'm like, nothing. He's like, yo, um, you want to do the show? I was like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. He's like, I'm going to put Hov on the phone so we can break the ice. Me and Jay spoke for about five, ten minutes and um, caught up for a second. We did the show. We spoke the day after the show, and that was that. That was legendary. Yeah, no, nah, it was. A, it was People a, need it was that. Good, yeah, no, nah, it was a good. It was a good thing, man. It felt really good, man. Um, Balls. now uh, I want to get to some records, man. We've been yeah. uh, telling stories. Um, yeah. So let's get to the whole Cam joint. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Welcome, yep, to, New welcome to New York City. City. Classic. Yes, sir. Yo, when when I started uh, the Apple. Uh, Beats one when I started the first record I played. Thank you, man. I a lot of people it. though. This first you got to play this record. Like this is never got a video. I just told you. Yeah, <laughs> but it's one of them ones. Right. It's a part of culture. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Then we're gonna get some Purple uh, Haze, the first album. Okay. And then we gotta get the Purple Haze too. Cameron's on Hot Nine Seven. Yes. Yo, Cam, man, I've been up here doing this show. This time, there was the Miss Jones era. Okay. Which was crazy. I remember. We had some crazy days. Right. Then it was this time since 2013, 2014. Yeah, 14, something like that. This is our first sit down. Yeah. In this in in the tens. Yeah. I mean, like, my nigga, I remember you got here. Yeah. Not as a host. I'm yeah. talking about as PD. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to see your growth and to see you elevate and even like I told you, I don't really want to say the wrong shit because I know I don't know what y'all can advertise and can't to see the shit things that y'all doing. Outside of this as well, yeah. it's dope, man. It's really. I remember dope. when I first got here, Cam and Jim was like, "Yo, come to Harlem, come to our, our, our video shoot." Yeah, you came to um. I pulled up music. Dolo. Yeah, a hundred percent, definitely. I don't know what video y'all was, was shooting. It was crunk, crunk music. Crunk music. Crunk yeah, music. That's you right. came to Harlem. Yeah. I remember one time you was like, "Yo, you." I don't know what the fuck the tension one time with me and you. You was like. Yeah, you feeling, you still feel tough? I'm like, yo, what the fuck is you talking about, <laughs> I don't know, man? I'm yo, I was like, yo, what is you talking about, man? It was a, it, it was that era, though. It was no, we was in era. the clubs, everybody yeah. was wilding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. It was a good but, time. So, do you remember when Jim decided to rap, decided to be an artist? Well, and, and can you take us through what he was doing? I know we hear the stories, but Jim's first jobs and then how it transitioned to artists. All right, so Jim, Jim is like, I, 
he's my man on the east side. Cause my I'm from the west side, but I live on the east side too. My grandmother's on the east side. You go to grandmother's house every weekend. Jim lived in my grandmother's building. So I would see Jim time to time. Jim grandmother passed away, God bless the day. So he had the free crib at like 17, 18 years old. That was vital, having a free crib at that time. You know, whether you want to go smoke, whether you want to go fuck with some bitches, whatever. Um, he had the free crib. And we used to go to his house where me, Mace, God bless the day, my cousin Bloodshed, and go to his house and rap. And we used to tell him, like, you need to just learn how to do this shit. We all doing this shit. And we would teach him formats and so on and so forth. And he he practiced and whatever. And he started practicing. Jim was really smart. Like, Jim, a lot of people don't know because they see uh, Jim's image. But Jim was really, really smart. Jim used to go to school at BMCC on Saturdays. And I remember one day, he, I called him. We supposed to do something. He was like, yo. I said, where you at? He said, I'm in school. I said, yo, get the fuck out of there. What the fuck you doing on school on a Saturday, nigga? Yo, leave that shit now, my nigga. Let's, we got to figure this get music this shit out. Yeah. He's like, yo. I said, yo, get the fuck back uptown. You bugging. It's Saturday, my nigga. You're in school. And he kept practicing, 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 practicing. And, um... When I got my deal, he was there for my very first album. You know, he's Jim is on my first album. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that. And um, he was real. Jim, Jim fucking just kept practicing. I, I tell like Jim right now is super nice. He's the best he's Fans. ever been. Yo, His album he yeah, just put yeah, out? This, he's super nice. I tell nigga Jim, Jim is like the Shawshank Redemption. Nigga kept knocking the shit down, knocking the shit down. And that nigga's super nice. And Jim, don't, Jim I, I'm, a, I'm a writer. Jim don't write his rhymes down. I'm very impressed. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't write his rhymes down. He go in the booth and all that shit is in his brain. I'm a nigga who write that shit in my phone. So um, we just was working with him. And then him being around, Jim figured it out to where what I like to tell niggas, they don't have to sit up under me. He learned to build his own relationships and right. learned to go politic with other people. And people always see the... the um, Jim Jones, the crazy well, that nigga's super smart, bro. Super smart. You know what I'm saying? And if he wasn't doing this shit, um, music or whatever, I'm pretty sure Jim wouldn't be running a big time corporation because it seemed crazy, but his crazy is calculated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's if you not let him stay in school shit. on Saturdays, he could yeah. be running Apple right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, <laughs> possibly, but he's not that's not a stupid nigga at all. You know what I mean? But um The Diplomats logo mm -hmm. and the protection of the brand. Mm -hmm. And how you guys manage that. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that people, you know, because um, you've merged it, you've collabed with Supreme long before collabing with Supreme was a thing. Was a thing. Um, you know, even now today, it's a, it's a, I think you got a collaboration coming up with Mitchell and Ness or something, right? Uh, well, Don C is kind of navigating. I'm not, I don't want to say because he's kind of politic and I believe it's new era. Okay. I think, I think. I don't want to say Don C is in charge of what but we're doing. But even that, Don C being who right. he is and the diplomat yeah. still matter in the street culture and the right. logo meaning something. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. I um I say from the Wu Tang and the Diplomat logo. Those mm. are two logos you really can't forget. But um my man Digger, me and Digger kind of came up, really Digger came up with it, but I copy wrote and got it done. But it's it wasn't really hard. If you look at the dollar bit back in the dollar bill, it's on there. Right. If you tip, if you have one get dollar right, bill yeah, right now, you're right right on there. So we just finessed it and did a little. A but little you don't allow it to go anywhere. You didn't allow it to get nah. played out. You didn't. Uh, you nah. know that's what I'm talking about. How do you manage that? That's just fans and cult movement. Like I mean, I can't sit there and force a nigga to be like, you better like the eagle or else. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Like I can't sit there. Like as much as styles come in and out. That's just fans fucking with us. That comes from the music. That comes from the dressing. That comes from f fucking with bitches or whatever, to getting a couple of dollars. Because all that shit matters. You know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, you could be the le best lyricist in the world, but if nobody want to be like you, you just a lyricist. You know, I wanted to get a fucking fisherman hat and a link chain because EPMD had it. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to save up and fucking... Get a Coogee and Kango because Biggie had it. You know what I'm saying? So and then you did that. You became. You are one of the most. Like you are a fashion icon of hip hop. The pink I, I cell phone, it. pink fur, pink land. That. Yeah, that's that the, was that's the male Mona Lisa. 
<laughs> uh, hip hop, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, that but how often famous, people man. still <laughs> reference you all the time? I mean, just, I forget which record just came out recently. Yeah. About dress, who said dressing their baby like Killer Camp? Like it just or happened Kanye. moments ago. Kanye done it yeah. too. But like you have become, you're synonymous with the flamboyance. Now I get that from a lot of the um, this generation's artists. You know, the up and coming artists because me. Me taking a chance and not giving a fuck what nobody say, that's what's going on. Like, the the more outlandish it is, the more regular it is right now. You know, niggas like, yo, Cam, you wearing pink? How this nigga gonna wear pink fur? That nigga's gay, da da. Whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, for instance, you know who I really like, and I'm giving an example of, of kind of my situation, mm -hmm. but it's not his situation, but for instance, like, I fuck with the, I, I never met him, I'm just saying I like his music, the baby, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I like, I fuck with his music. The the nigga was wearing a pamper one time. You know what I'm saying? But he got your attention with that. Now he's nice and niggas fuck with him. You ain't seen a pamper since. Mm -hmm. Nope. You get what I'm saying? He did what he had to do. Not saying I wear a pamper, but I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I got you. But I understand he did what he had to do. Shock the world. Right. To, so now you could listen to me. You That's know right. how hard it is to stand out when you good and it's a bunch of good niggas around? So you got to do something to make people want to fuck with you. So now, okay, now you fuck with me. Now you'll pay attention to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was doing back when I first started dressing and everything else, taking chances, saying, all right, the music is cool, but I got to make more, I got to gravitate more people to be like, yo, why this nigga doing this? Why are you getting so much And it so was still attention? on brand for Harlem, too, because Harlem Yeah, the dressing. flamboyance. I mean, listen, it's, it's the home of Dapper Dan. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is, this. that's what Harlem is known for. Yeah, I mean, people ask me about dressing. I tell them, I tell them look, before trying to impress the world, we used to have, see, like, we, niggas won't admit it to this day, but niggas still be, like, on some, we got diplomat show or some shit like this. Not just us, the group. I think it's who come with us like, yo, I'm going to be dressed better than this. Day. And we won't even say nothing, but it's all in our brain like, all right, all right, cool. We wore that, all right, cool. I, I grabbed our next show. I know what I got to do. It's a, it's a silent beef on being fly. You know what I'm saying? And we still won't say nothing about it, but nigga might grab a nigga kind of like, all right, that's cool. I'll see what you did today. You know what I'm saying? But... Before impressing anybody else, we was out trying to do each other. Did you ever have one of those, um, anyone ever take you to Dapper Dan spot in the, in the heyday? Yeah, absolutely. That was on 25th. I couldn't afford it. You know what I'm saying? That was popping when I was 10, 11 years old. So it was more aspirational just seeing it. Yeah, I used to go out in front of Dap's store and wait for like rappers to come in there, like Father MC and them type niggas used to all come in there. Trying to get his clothes and shit. It was like cool just to be on our 25th and see people going... And then out his shit, and not just Dap. It was another store called Bell's Fashion, that was kind of like Dapper Dan when Dapper Dan was slowing down. And I used to sit out there and watch all the rappers going there when I was not even a teenager yet. And by the way, one thing we've got about Ebro is uh, uh, Halloween. Lil Nas X dressed up as as Cam. Well, every year somebody does it. Whether it's Tiger and his crew dressing up as Dipset. I think last year Puff Son did it. Cause I get tagged on all that shit on um, social media, so. It's always a celebrity that does the the pink drink every year, and I appreciate the love, man. Um, Kanye uh, and you off the first Purple Haze album. Yep. Now, he did the one song off that album, right? He produced he did, one. He, he did about probably three or four. Three on first Purple. Down and Out's the big, yeah, the big it, one. Yeah, because he did the chorus on there, but um, he probably did three or four on there. Beats, beats I'm talking about. Beats. Yeah. Um, fast forward to now, um, and you see Kanye obviously still continuing to do his fashion thing, continue to be the troll. Right. He's a divisive figure, whatever, whatever. Right. Um, have you guys crossed paths? Uh, we spoke maybe, I would say five, six years ago, but we got a lot of mutual friends. Right. A lot of mutual friends. Con Kanye calls with that beat. Cam Kanye could happen again? Oh, yeah. I don't have no problem with Kanye. I, I would love for Kanye to do a beat. I'm happy for everything he's doing to really successful. Yo, that would eat the world up. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I Like I said, I'm, what niggas don't be realizing is... Like, for instance, you know, we, let's take, what's the name? We'll, 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 we look, we seen Jay-Z become a billionaire, right? And did you, I don't know how accurate it is, but you look on there and you see the breakdown of how he became a billionaire. How much money was pertained to music about? Um, not even 50%, I don't think. Exactly. Yeah. So when I see niggas doing other shit outside of music, such as Kanye, doing sneakers or clothing or 
like I was referring to you guys earlier, to me, that's what's dope about that shit. So everything Kanye is doing dope. If we could do another song together, that'd be dope. I'm not pushing the envelope. But if it happens, it happens. Did you ever think you would see a time in hip hop um, where, I th and I think we're, I hope we're coming out of it, where it became cool to be a fiend? <laughs> Did you? I never thought nah, I. Nah, nah, I can't. I can definitely can't say that. But, but the pill popping opioid thing became a. Yeah. Took well, over. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I don't. Be honest, I don't know how it happened or when it happened, but hopefully we'll get out that situation. Nobody want to see niggas dying. You know, nah. it's one thing smoking weed and getting high and enjoying, but niggas is dying. You know what I'm saying? Overdosing and at a rate that's just. Cr it's crazy. Crazy. Like, yo, like Mac Miller's my man. You know, that nigga, when he first came to New York, you stay at my house, come to my Really? Crib. Yeah, like, I, it's on the net, but me and Mac Miller got, like, three, four songs together. That's my nigga, like, and he used to come to my house all the time, spend the night in my crib, pause, no homo. I got a studio in my house. And, I know that Mac is smiling down right yeah. now, that you still hit the pause, no homo yeah, right now. Nah, I know he'd appreciate nah, that more than nah, anything. Nah, that's my man, so that shit kind of hurt me, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't know each other that long, but... I remember he's like, yo, kid, I got my first million dollars. And you know, I used to tell him about deals he shouldn't take and didn't take. And he was getting a lot of money on tours. And I was like, it don't make sense taking a deal unless like $30 million. Because he's making a lot of money as an independent artist. Mm -hmm. And um, that shit just kind of hurt, B. Because that was my dude. That was my dude. And I never knew he did none of that shit because he ain't doing it in front of my crib. Well, that was the... House. I think that's what everyone was kind of so... Everyone who knew him felt so weird about is that you heard that there was stuff going on. I would see him and check in, like, how are you doing? Right. But when you were with him, he was so happy. Yeah. It was hard to even envision. Fam, I never had a clue or inkling anything that that kid was doing, anything he was doing, man. Like I said, I don't want to touch on it too much because I never really got the details on it. Just going off from what I heard, but... That was my man, and that shit is sad. Yeah. You um you posted recently about uh, a loss in your personal life. Right. Right. And I think you know over the years of you having a public relationship, <laughs> me knowing you so long, right. that was new for me. Right. Right. Even you, you know, uh, I, excuse me for uh forgetting the the, the young lady's name. Not to us, it's no problem. Yeah. Um, but public relationships right. is something that I don't know if you're completely comfortable with. Yeah, no, but it we keeps... could talk about whatever you want to well, talk no, about. Well, no, not to not talk about it, but right. would you ever be in a public relationship again? Um, probably not. Probably not. Not saying I didn't have fun doing it while I was doing it. But so for instance, we'll talk about her real quick. I dated her years ago. Mm -hmm. Um she put up a picture of my son on Twitter. This is pre pre um Instagram, it's just Twitter. And my baby mom is real. Secure, real, real serious about her and my son's privacy at that time. So I cold turkey her. I just stopped fucking with her, period. Mm. That just like, yo. She put it up in what way? Playfully or being, she, it wasn't a great moment? I was doing a video. She from Philly. I was doing a video on some Philly bitches there at the video and she got mad. They like, we with Cam now, da da da. And she put up a picture of my son in his pajamas, like, well, his son be with me, da da da. Nah, yeah. violation. Right, right, got cold it. Turkey. Complete violation. So you went cold, yeah, cold turkey. turkey. All right. I dead my baby mom was furious. I deaded her for 10 years. Didn't speak to her no more. Just, it was over. Mm. So when my son turned 18, I spoke to her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wouldn't speak to her no more or whatever. She had just got a relationship. I got a relationship, and we've been fucking around for the last year and a half. But as far as um, public relationship, I don't know. I doubt it. But the thing is, when I was doing a relationship with Juju, when I had a relationship with Juju, <clears throat> nobody knew Instagram was going to be the monster it turned out to be. It was all fun and jokes and taking uh, pictures okay, and okay, everything okay, else. Okay. And let's see how this It was shit, all playful. It was all playful. And you know what I'm saying? That niggas start seeing like, oh. Walkthrough. Niggas want you to do a walkthrough? All right, cool. Yo, niggas getting commercials, niggas getting deals, niggas in TV shows. This shit, we all watch this shit happen in front of us, Thanks. you know what I'm saying? Thanks. So I started marketing. I'm like, I start, I'm in a relationship, but I'm marketing. I'm like, even with, with Juju, like, if you I left this shit on my page in case niggas be having me fucked up. How I started marketing, I'm like, yo, you got a good body, but you're super smart. Same thing I was telling you about with the pink or the diaper with baby. Let's get the attention and then show all your assets that you got going on. So it was dope doing that. And I, I wouldn't take that process back forever. But when it's over, people got to pick sides and people have their own theories and people this, that, and the third. And it starts getting messy because 
if you got a phone, you got an opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anybody with a phone has an opinion. And with me, I don't really give a fuck because the internet and social media is an asset for me. I thank God. I tell niggas that all the time. I'm glad this wasn't my come up because I see people panic. Yo, my phone's not on 50%. I need a charger. Yo, give me the angle. Yo, I ain't get this many motherfucking <laughs> likes. Yo, oh my God, I'm gonna go crazy. Yo, my shit's going down. My swipe up game. This bitch is be hitting me, yo. Cam, I need to, yo, can we do some skits? I'm like, what do you do? Nah, I quit my job because whatever that swipe up, and they they was making a shitload of money. Now, a new bitch done came along, part Took of my language, bread. um, Chanel. A new female came along, and they the shit, so now they trying to figure out something else to do. And I see so many people panic over there, and I'm like, Yo, I'm glad that I don't have to panic, man. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know about doing a public relationship. Even like, for instance, my, my shorty who just passed away, right? I'm looking on shit, niggas like, yo, Kim, you sacrificed her for So I'm like, what the fuck is yo, you bro, talking about, man? To, bro. <laughs> oh, you, you get your albums coming out and your fame's coming back, so you sacrifice. What the fuck is you talking about? So I, no, I swear to God, that I, is so, crazy. Yo, town. where I went, people are fuck, crazy though, bro. No, what crazy. I'm saying, is, trust me, I'm just talking about this with y'all because yeah. this the type yeah. of shit that's yeah. be going on. So I be like, so I went and met up with some niggas, say, so I get my fame and my album sales, sacrifice my bitch. I, right, I dig it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that makes like a lot sense. of sense. Kim, you killed the girl. You need anger management. I killed a girl and I only need anger management. That's all I need. <laughs> Come on, man. Niggas is crazy, man. So public relationships, I doubt it, but I'm not against, you know, having fun. And if it happens to get out yeah, there and it gets out it there, then cool. It you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I saw that you uh you sat with our guys, the Rosenthal's the other day, and uh did the It's the Real podcast. Yeah, that's my dues. And you said that uh you had some question marks about whether dinosaurs ever existed. <sighs> Take us through it, Cam. What do you think happened? I'm be honest with you, man. He's this... questioning science, man. Keep it a hundred, Cam. You don't know these motherfuckers that came up with this science I'll shit. I'll be honest with you. My cousin Duke the Guy got me on this shit, man. <laughs> this nigga, he does a lot of research, a lot of homework on all that shit. And he, I used in his house and he convinced me. And uh, I've been getting, yo, it's been a lot of beef, uh, not real beef, but like a lot of back. I like, I didn't know this topic was so <laughs> Such fucking, a hot topic? It was a fucking serious yo, listen, topic. Yo, listen, when Kyrie that Irving said made, the world is flat, his whole yo, life that, changed. That shit was on page six in the New York Post the other day. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I just had an opinion that I ain't believe it's dinosaurs. I didn't know it was going to turn into a whole big shit. The Daily News called me all type of shit. I'm like... Bro, it's just a fucking opinion. It might be a, you know no, it saying? might be a bag at the Museum of Natural History though, where yeah. it's the Cameron no. tour. Yeah, you host it. You host it yeah. as you walk through the dinosaurs. Yo, let me tell you something, bro, on some G shit. It's a it's a company called Fake Dinosaurs. And they sell millions of dollars of merch per year. I did the due diligence on it. Of course you did. Cause they hit me. And I I said, is this company real? Cause they hit my um my e my business email, my manager, and I was like, they sell about close to eight digits a year on just fake dinosaur merch, and they want to do some limited edition shit with me. What do you mean fake me? dinosaur merch? Don't worry, you're getting no, caught no, off listen, in the weeds. No, listen. Major announcement right now that this said dinosaur if you, is coming. If you Google it, I've never heard of it myself. It's called fake dinosaurs. They don't believe in dinosaurs. Mm. They got some fake dinosaur merch shit they search, they, they, they sell. And they want to give me, like, my own little Line. piece of it. Yeah, it's called <laughs> fake it, dinosaur. Run it. I say, yo, why not? Why now, people not? don't give you credit unless uh, maybe people remember. Mm -hmm. But Cam was the first. Weren't you the first with the socks and the yep. and the fit and the surgical mask? Yeah. yeah and the, the shower curtain. Shower curtain. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Those sold out. Those were thing. gone. Yeah, we still sell it on the dips. It's called the dipsetstore.com. You could get all that shit on there. But um, all that shit. That's why I say, yo, listen, music leads to other things. You know what I'm saying? And if you try to stay music minded your whole life, look, how many people have been on a run consistently of music? I'm talking about like you got Jay, Not a lot. you got Jay, you got you can say Snoop if you want Nas when he wants to come out, Drake, Drake, with Kanye. I'm not even mm. talking about Drake. To me, Drake is still new. New. I'm talking right. about twenty. Not, years. You're talking about twenty, yeah, twenty-five years. Yeah, okay. exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm talking about. Not even consistently could pop out and niggas give a fuck. Like, for instance, I'm not going to say no artist's name, but you may have an artist to be like, yo, I wanna, I'm want to, i coming out. I want to go fuck with 
with Ebro and them niggas up at Hot 97. Niggas be like, yo, this don't make sense. All yo. the time. Yeah, yeah, you All know? the time. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, like, you ain't even went to Drewski yet. Yeah, you ain't exactly. went to none of the young yeah, cats. Exactly. Like, this is, this is for... I just see Patty up here. I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. Patty Duke you been here 25 yeah, years. that's what I'm trying to tell you. So it's a lot of niggas that's not relevant, and I'm not dissing them. And it's just a blessing to be in this position. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's a great way of putting it, because there's a certain class of cats from your era, you, Fat Joe, you know, uh, right. that so, still I, mean... I definitely didn't mean to forgive Fat Joe. There, there's, a, there's a hand... And then other people have different pockets, right? Like, Wu has their ghost and meth. It still means right. something. Right. But, like, it's it's not easy to keep it's, that relevance for that long. It's not reinventing yourself or even staying true to who you are and still being important. That shit is not an easy task, you know what I'm saying? Even when it comes to writing, like... So Purple Ways 2... Just real quick on topic, it's almost like a book because there's so much shit that I couldn't talk about at a particular mm. time, and that time passed the way I'd be like, "I nigga should be over this by now." You know right, what I'm right. saying? Like <laughs> statute should... of limitations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I'm at a certain point now. Exactly. It ain't even necessarily all about drugs or killer or anything like that, but it's more like niggas may get in their feelings because I may talk about uh, Big L what happened when he died or whatever. And that's not really my story to tell. That's the big homies on my block story to tell. But I'm not going to sit there and act like I ain't see what was going on neither. Right. It's so much bread them niggas could get. You know how I many people come to me for a Big Al movie? Cam, could you get together? They want to do a Big Al movie. I'm talking about potential movies that they've done hundreds of million dollars. Like the people who did the movie Black Mass, the um, Whitey Bulger movie. Mm -hmm. They want to do the Big Al movie, but trying to get all these elements of people together on the same page because it's still kind of touchy over there. You know, these are people who grew up with each other who ended up doing what I and, 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 and his And his cohorts, like, you, are still not old. These are yeah. people who are still in their 40s. Yeah, but you know, what you mean? know it's, it's, it starts getting generational to where yeah. the kids is like, oh, word, that's who did this to my father. and that. You know, it gets generational. So I try and whenever I try to talk to the bigger homies, my big homies, I'd be like, yo, y'all should really try and get everything organized because y'all leaving possibly $100 million on the table. Mm. Not saying that it's all going to go to you, but if you Shit, get 10%, even if you got 5%, five million. Yeah, exactly. Well, and on top of that, from a cultural standpoint, documenting this important story. Yeah. You know, like, Big L's a really important story. He's he's misunderstood. Listen. That people don't even know it. They really don't know forget, it. Besides the rap shit, I'll tell you like this. Besides, And you can include the rap shit. The story on my block is crazier than the movie paid in full. Crazier. Way crazier. So that's why I'm like, but it's not my story to tell. If I told the story, right, you ever see City of Gods? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would be the cameraman. Like, I'm, you know, because I wasn't involved with all the shit they doing, but I was right there when they was doing it. You know, them was the big homies. So what I'm saying is, I could tell you, but I'd rather them tell you. That's their story. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, if them niggas get it together... They can make a shitload of money. Of the movies, um, Paid in Full, uh, Paper Soldiers, you wrote those, directed, or you were just in those? Which movies? I'm Paper sorry. Soldiers and Paid in Full. I would, those day movies. Those I was, day. Okay. I, I auditioned for Paid in Full. You know, that was a um, Merrimack, um, Merrimax Dimension film. Right. I auditioned for that part. Paper Soldiers, that was just a movie Dane was doing. I think that's Kevin Hart's first movie ever. And Dame was trying to feed off of the energy from Pay the Full and do movies as well. But um And then the album movies, the movies you did to go with the albums yeah, you did. Well though. I did I, that's what I've been doing. Um I, I've been executive producing movies the last couple years. Um I had a, a couple three movie deal with Netflix. Um it's a movie I did called Percentage with uh, Queen Latifah and Shaquem. Executive producer with me with Macy Gray and Vin Rains and Melinda Williams and Omar Gooden and it was about a shitload of people in there that my partner Jacob did Brotherly Love. Um with a bunch of people. That's what we've been doing. Like so that kind of that's what I've been doing. So I'm doing a new movie. Actually, um one of the one of the movies that I've just finished is called Is It a Crime? This this one particular movie I hooked up with Mona. So Mona's Gonna be doing a shopping for that particular. Mona Scott. Yeah, Mona Scott. Cause she's trying. Not saying she's trying. She's doing more written stuff, and I don't know exactly. I'm not in the reality world, but she has a great agent that she works with. The shop stuff. Um. So this movie called Is It a Crime? I actually just 
finished it up Friday. I took it to Cairns. I noticed a few things that was fucked up with the sound. So the last four or five months, I've been trying to get the 5.1 Dolby right, but I've been busy. So we just finished that. At top of year, we'll see where we'll place that movie at. But that's what I've been doing the last few years, and that shit is less of a headache. Mm, bigger bags, too. Bigger bags, less of a headache. And me, I love being known and all that, but I'll take the bag before the fame any day, and as as anybody should. But And how much more fame do you need? I mean, I you've been on a run of fame for 20 years. That was my thing for years. If I could say, I used to get jealous of, of um, the Kevin Loud. I mean, now we're in a different era. I remember... Um, being in a movie theater one time and I bumped into Kevin Lyles and so many kids was Cam, 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 da 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 da. Y'all wanna do this? I need to get on. And I'm like, that's the nigga gave you my deal right there. <laughs> and I don't said, even know. Yeah, and niggas was like, and I, and I used to be mad and, and Kevin was like, don't, don't fucking do that, man. <laughs> Yo, Cam, don't do that. And I'm like, oh, I see what's going on. Niggas want a bag and don't be one to they be They get bothered. to live whatever they yeah, want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's different now, but I'm just trying to say, that was always like my goal. I'm like, I'm pushing everybody else and chill out and collect. You know what I mean? His name is Cameron. He's got yeah. a new album, Purple Haze 2. What should we it's play a, off Purple Haze 2, man? Um, we could play Big Deal. and um, Now, play. I ain't heard nothing, so we yeah. didn't even have an album before this. Okay, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll play Big Deal and then, and then um, let's get into... My City featuring Max B. That's kind of the Ooh, big I was gonna ask you about yeah, Max. He just yeah. put out a project too, yeah. sounding all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah from man. inside, sounding I, great. I, I told nigga, nigga out working you from jail is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yo, like, Max B <laughs> just dropped seven joints. Yeah, I'm on sounding that. like something not I, yeah, hooks, I know. anything. I know. I'm on that. I'm on that project yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah, we'll get into My City featuring Max B and and the song Big Deal. But the the My City joint is more like. I told you it's like the story kind of of my block. Not not in detail, just give you a little little sneak little, peek. Little sneak peek. My purple ways, like I said, is really like a book. Go listen to a bunch of stories in there. There's some bangers in there, but I would say that shit is like a book. His name is Cameron. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Thank, Thank you very you much. Give it up one time. Thank Come on, man.